Hi, I'm Ken from Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Orion uh, Observer 80 ST, uh, what it is, some of the features about it, some basic use, and uh, get you started observing things in the night sky. So let's get started. Well, the first thing to know about this telescope is that it's an 80 millimeter refractor and a fairly short focal length. It's a 400 millimeter focal length f5. So you get a very low power and a very wide field natively out of this telescope. Now you can always enhance the magnification by putting different eyepieces in, but the, the best part of this telescope is it is such a wide field of view. So 80 millimeters at low power is great for looking at the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy, those really big deep sky objects. It also makes them very bright too, relatively speaking. So it's, it's fairly easy to see those things if you can get away from the city lights. The scope comes with a finder scope on the side uh, to help aim it, a uh, diagonal and two eyepieces, a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. Now your 25 millimeter is the low power, and the 10 millimeter is the high power. It's kind of the opposite of the way that you'd expect. Higher the number, lower the power. So while I'm here, I'll just tell you, you always want to start uh, viewing with the 25 millimeter because it gives you that wide field of view. Once you've found something, let's say you're looking at Jupiter, you find it with this one, and then you want to zoom in, you pop that one out, put the higher power one in, and then just refocus here, and you get a closer up image. The finder scope is a reflex sight. There's no magnification. It has a little red dot that floats in the middle of the field of view and allows you to quickly overlap it with the object and then you'll find it in the, in the main scope. Now I get this question a lot from beginners when they start viewing, they never align this thing. So they try to use it to find Jupiter and then they look through the IPs and it's not there. Well, you've got to calibrate it when you first set it up. Just slip, simply slipping it into the, the mounting shoe here isn't good enough. It's not pointed exactly at the same thing. So we give you two screws, uh, this direction, up and down, sort of, and this direction here, this left and right direction, to calibrate the dot to the main view. So how do you do that? Um, I'm going to pretend to look at something out here. I don't have that much, that good of a view. But you got to find something the hard way first. Find it with your main scope. And actually, I'm going to use the 25 because that's probably easiest. Use the 25, lock it down. Point it off at a building or a uh, power pole or something um, fairly far away, usually about a, a quarter mile or more away is good enough. And find it not using the finder scope because remember that's not aligned yet. So I'm going to find it here with my eyepiece, get it centered, make sure it's an identified object. If you're looking at one tree among a bunch of trees in a forest, you're never going to know which one you're actually looking at. So make sure it's easily identifiable. So I get the top of a power pole over there and I got the corner of it right in the center of the field of view. Now look through your finder scope after you turn it on, and you'll see a little dot, and you'll notice it's not looking at the same thing. Adjust this screw and this screw back and forth until the dot is overlapping with what you see here. You might have to go back and forth once or twice in case you bump this on the way back and forth. Uh, just verify it's centered, and then verify it's centered here, and then you've used this to align um, the object, and when you point it at Jupiter and get it on the dot, you know you'll see Jupiter in the field of view of your low-power eyepiece. It's as simple as that. So the telescope itself sits on top of this equatorial mount, and this is a little bit different than your normal photo tripod, which just swivels left and right, up and down. The equatorial mount is designed to track uh, the axis of Earth's rotation, so it'll follow things in the sky very easily by just twisting one knob. There's a little setup involved in um, getting it uh, up and running, and it's a little bit more of a learning curve to kind of figure out the coordinates. If you loosen the two axes, you've got this direction, this east to west arc, and then north and south along this axis. And basically, the Earth's axis of rotation is going to be parallel to this. So right now, if you can see that I've got it set to about 37 degrees, that's our latitude here in, um, in the San Francisco Bay Area. If you're much further north, you're going to want to loosen the latitude lock screw and then adjust it up here. And if you notice, this is slowly moving upwards. It's probably at 40 degrees now or 45 degrees. Basically, that just corresponds to how high Polaris is above the north horizon. So I'm going to bring it back down to our 37 degrees, somewhere around there. Then you just have to locate which direction is north. Uh, if you can find Polaris, that's perfect. Point this axis northwards and at the right latitude, and you're right at uh, Polaris, so you're polar aligned. Otherwise, uh, use a compass, use your smartphone, look at a map, uh, figure out which street near you runs exactly north-south, and just line it parallel. As long as this is pointed towards Polaris, the mount is polar line. And what that means is, let's say I'm looking at, uh, let's just say I'm looking at Jupiter right there. I lock the knobs down, 
And then the slow motion knobs, if I'm aligned, I just have to twist this one on the side here, the right ascension knob, and it'll follow Jupiter as it rotates through the night sky or any object. It's, it's parallel to Earth's axis of rotation and follows as the Earth rotates underneath us. All right, well, there you have it. So I hope you see that it actually isn't too difficult to use the Orion Observer ADST. Uh, you're ready to start viewing things in the night sky. So go have some fun. Thank you very much. Clear skies.